silence and shut off your cell phones, please, and join us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United, United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Are there any uh, additions or deletions? I have two additions. I have um, herbicide materials for 20 herbicide program and the county, Lake County Youth and 20 program grant request with the Oregon Department of Education. Perfect. Dr. Chair, your speaker's no longer working. Um, all right, so we'll move on to the first item that we have on the list for Kevin Hawk, uh, road superintendent on uh, surface and treatment oil. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, you guys should have in front of you the request for quotes um, for Alpine Asphalt and Idaho Asphalt. Um, these two vendors are the vendors available for this region. Um, two vendors we historically get bids from. Uh, Albina, in this case, is the uh, apparent low quote. Um, I'm going to find my note here. <coughs> Which I seem to have misplaced. One million ninety-five thousand. Mm -hmm. So, if you'll notice, if you if you remember last year's quotes, I guess I just wanted to note note this as somewhat of a um, for the product's sake, but also why we we have some uh, you'll see on there CRS three P and CMS three P. So the the three in this oil indicates um, a little bit more residual asphalt. And since this material is going on Christmas Valley Highway, where there's much, much higher truck count, um, we, we quoted out some, I guess if you want to think of it as a heavier oil as it pertains to um, asphalt content. Normal chipping oil has 58% con content. This will have uh, a little bit closer to 65 percent. <clears throat> oh, ninety-five thousand and sixteen dollars. Sorry, I was looking for my actual handwritten note, but right there I put it on there. One million ninety-five thousand and sixteen dollars. Gotcha. Or do you? Because I know that we haven't gone with Albina typically in the past, typically because they weren't the lowest bidder. Um, do you have any concerns over just them being able to to work with you and work with Lake County on some of these roads and given the projects that you're at? The a reasonable question. There's always there's always concern when you go with somebody historically, but in this case, it's dollars and cents. And part of if you see, I think I think you guys should all have it. Um, I actually put the quote in there where you see the verbiage of what our proposal is. Um, in the second part of that, the work schedule proposed. Mm -hmm. This is a very aggressive work schedule that we're um, working at because there's a very, very large quantity of oil um, and they have agreed in this work proposed that they can deliver it as we requested. So I'm, I'm actually pretty excited about the amount of oil we'll be able to put down each day. It, it should it should really show some improved efficiencies. Chris Valley Highway doesn't have a lot of intersections or things that really should hold us up. Um, right. So we should be able to really put a lot of material down, and they believe they can get it to us. Right. <clears throat> With Alvina, you got uh, quotes for four different looks like a little bit different mixtures of product there. One coming from Matters and three from Clamor. So that's just where the that's just where the uh, um, freight is paid from. It's all it's all spec the same. It's all okay. It, a lot of times, um, 
Idaho would ship from uh, White City plant or from Nampa, Idaho. So it's all it's all specified material. It's not. Okay. And they bid, and the two companies bid accordingly against the specified material. So they were they were built, they were bidding against apples and apples. So if you need the um, sixty five percent oil content, it could come from matters. Um. It won't come from Madras. The the higher the, the heavier oil for layman's terms, uh, talking point purposes, will come from Klamath Falls. The CRS two P will all come from Madras. Okay. That's how they that's how they bid it by location for the they they can't they can't provide it from Madras. The heavier higher content asphalt. Gotcha. So uh, they actually broke it down by where they're shipping it from, where Idaho is saying we're just going to ship it from Nampa. Um, a lot of times in the past, though, it, it came from different locations and then it gets adjusted later on. You know, do you plan to use all four different types or just the three? The three no, we'll use, we'll use everything there. The CSS 1H, I guess I should have went into a little bit deeper. Um, the CSS1H is the material that we utilize for fog seal, and we'll cut it 70-30 or 60-40 uh, with water, and then we um, application rate wise, and, and it's something that I have to see on the road. So I, I um, we plan for a 60-40 cut of that at an 18 to 20 shot rate, which means that there's eight, uh, 18 hundredths of a gallon going down on a square yard, but that's how that tons come about. Gotcha. Okay. So yes, we will use all of it. The C the CMS oil, the CMS three oil is specifically for locations on that road where we're going to do multiple applications, which I talked about in the road advisory, where we're going to actually put three quarter inch material down first, and with this medium set oil, medium set just meaning it takes a little bit longer to cure, out allows for the aggregates to set deeper in the oil, <clears throat> and those locations I have. Um, measured out because they're those sections of route on Christmas Valley Highway are just slightly more deteriorated than the rest of it for whatever reason uh, they might not have got overlaid in the past or or something to that nature or in this cycle lacked a little treatment the last time so we're trying to make those sections more durable that's what that type of oil does gotcha. Without, without getting too road technical. That's all good. But Albina, oh, we'd like to proceed um, that way because of the um, cost. Um, it's uh, they were a difference if you if you do the math on both quotes, which maybe I I didn't write on here is a difference of just shy of seventeen thousand dollars. Um, Albina is cheaper on their quote, and um, we believe that part of this quote was actually the work schedule itself as well, not just the material, because it's like I said, it's typically we shoot three, three to four tankers a day, and this year we're going to shoot four for sure, and probably the fifth. Yeah. Other questions? This is normally about how much we spend a year. Um, this is a little bit more than than what we have been spending, but um, it's it's the kind of the theory that we you know we talk about in road advisory. Pay, pay it now or pay it later is going to cost you more later. So we're we're doing this oil is going to um, service treat from. The 395 intersection with Christmas Valley to the intersection where the Chevron is, um, plus or minus there, depending on there's some water line scheduling with the town and some different things that we might have to plan around. And then also there's oil on here, as you read in the work proposed, to surface tree Old Lake Road from um, the States Road 31 to the same intersection. Okay. At the CV Highway where the Chevron is, but to get all those parts and pieces in one place and then not do this amount of oil doesn't 
doesn't help with our efficiency. So I, I to do, we need to just do that whole stretch. Gotcha. Okay. This is an update for you. Um, Mary Holmes came from Business Oregon working on a grant for the folks up in the Christmas Valley Water District. And so we're hoping we'll get some of that and then they can fix that spot right there on that intersection. Mm -hmm. And you know, you can work with them on that. So. Yeah, I, I met with the Erica. Yeah. I met with the Erica the other day, maybe two weeks ago, to discuss what her upgrades need to be and we'll we'll try to help and accommodate uh, at, you know as much as we can. Um, why I say that this oil will go plus or minus to the intersection is if if that oil if that water project gets delayed to the point where I'm not going to put surface treatment down where they want to dig up. So and they also have some general maintenance plans to pave that intersection and actually raise it up some. Um, right. It is low. Yeah. And, and and the reality is that we'll work with them as best we can. Um, next year's if you look at the road advisory work plan schedule next year's schedule is to go from wherever we leave off this year and just continue right on out towards you know the school so um it'll either get done this year or next year but yeah i met with her i, I believe about two weeks ago i met with her Alrighty. um any other questions okay we can move on to the next the herbicide and materials for uh, like the herbicide project. So <clears throat> this this herbicide material is to finish out our this current fiscal year's uh, herbicide <clears throat> program. If you look at the materials on there, we have a we have a mix that is the first item on there, milestone that's one on Roundup that um, works good for um, selective and non-selective uh, material, and then. We get some straight glyphosate 2,4-D um, with some residual in. The last item on there you'll see is toured on that um, we we are this year um, asking for a little bit more of that because of our vegetation management plans um, that we talked about in the road advisory where we're doing a lot more mowing of the right of way. That'll that'll help us go in where we can broadcast that material and try to keep it held back um, in the clear zone and in the right of way. So that that material is is not necessarily new, but there's there's more of it if you look from what was last year to try and control the vegetation in the right of way where we've already done some mechanical management. So is that a pre-emergent? Do you know? Residual. Yeah. It'll it'll stay on the ground. Um, and that's, if you look at the first mix, the Aki mix, that's what the, that's what the, that mix is kind of designed to do is to catch a little bit of everything. So it's got selective and non-selective. It has a contact material. So whatever's there gets burnt and, and controlled, but also the residual stays on for like what you're talking about for pre-emergent. It's, it's tough to know exactly when that should be put on and sometimes I, I will add this um it in certain locations it gets diluted because of um pivots and we we end up having a lot of places in our right away where we're irrigating right away <laughs> it's hard to control the vegetation chemically and then have it be diluted <coughs> away and we put out this as a as a quantity quote um, if you look on here um, you know one material might be cheaper from one vendor um, but as a whole the the quantity is 34,000 um, the, the quantity quote from Wilbur Ellis is 34,343 dollars so that's what we would like to move forward with um, also this one would fall in under rule number nine. Um, 
this material, these are the two historical vendors that are available to make material for us. So it's, yep. as the rule states, um, unlikely that it encourages any favoritism. There's only so many suppliers um, that we can work with. So. Right. And the other thing we did was just worth noting for, for um, I guess, efficiency sake, not storing material too long sake, we, we try to get a lot of this material in uh, 30 gallon containers, 15 gallon containers, or these two and a half gallon jugs. And that way we don't, we don't end up storing large quantities over the season. What we did, we put on the, in the right away, and then we don't end up storing material. A lot of times it doesn't keep. So does this, this is including the freight over here? Yeah, that gets it, that gets it to us, and then um, that gets it to our door. Yep. I just didn't notice any freight charges in either one of them, so. Is there any other questions on? Mm, no, uh, other than just the conversation that you and I had had about, you know, one of the issues being that uh, you'll still have it um, in some of these ditches and along the, a lot of these roads, a lot of the product that you spray actually gets washed off because we still have an issue with pivots that are spraying the roads and start right away. Yeah, or I mean, and it is worth noting. I mean, I know this is for approval of this of this contract, but it's it's worth noting that some of our some of our vegetation control gets literally diluted um, with ordinance twenty three not always being followed. So there's there's road complexities with that, but then also in some cases we literally are managing a right of way that's being irrigated where we're trying to keep vegetation off of it irrigation is allowing for vegetation to thrive so do you have that nuisance that carl brought up the irrigating that you're using the actual ordinance itself yeah can i do can you email it to me yeah yeah i keep i it's in the i have it electronically i'm pretty sure i have it electronically um and then i i i keep copies in my truck because i battle with this all the time and then there's a hard copy in your road advisory book. Yes. I think he puts it in the back of the road advisory over here. But yeah, I have electronic like that. Yep. And, and um, now that I think about it, it is, there's a hyperlink to it on the uh, website. Yeah. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken right yeah. now. With the rest of with the rest of our county ordinances. All right. Any other questions on that on your website? Okay. okay, we will move on then to the next item, um, which is Jake Greer. Uh -huh. uh, do you have do you have an, an update for us? Yes, if I if I can. Yeah, I'll, absolutely. I'll, I'm about to hold Jake up, but <laughs> <All right. laughs> if I can have five minutes, I'll yeah, see you often, so I'll, I'll let you go. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, Commissioner Alberts and I were talking here the other day to just utilize maybe a little bit of time here for a department update on some of the plan work that we have and to discuss some of the concerns, customer concerns, and calling complaints for the gravel roads. And so I thought I'd take just a minute if you guys will allow sure. me that. Absolutely. Um, currently, just to give you a department update on our, on our work for the next several weeks, we are kind of finishing up the winter seasonal work with our inline crusher um, that is out on the hog back. They're finishing up that, that this week. And we're going to be working on Christmas Valley Highway um, there's some, some minor outstanding drainage issues that we're going to be completing. Uh, we will have some cattle guard adjustments on that road um, that we got into in, in depth at the road advisory meeting. But there are five cattle guards on that road that we will be adjusting. 
we're going to be putting shoulders on that CV highway for the um, pretty much the entire length from 395 all the way to Chevron. Um, the shoulders on Old Lake Road we just did not too long ago, so they're they're in pretty reasonable shape. But all of our work will be in in North Lake for pretty much the months of April, May, June, and July until we get all this prep work done and the, and the surface treatment completed. We also are going to work on the Millican Road. Um, the Millican Road and uh, Fossil Lake Road have some low issue, uh, uh, low shoulder issues that we are going to, we've saved a little bit of material up there and we're going to put shoulders on those. Uh, yeah. Well, I shouldn't say those two roads. We're going to work on Millican Road first, and as time allows, we'll see where that goes. Yeah. Okay. Um, Fossil Lake Road, though, is is in the plans for the, the same type of preventative maintenance um, work because the edges of our asphalt are starting to deteriorate some, uh, and, they, and that needs to be done. So just quickly to overview um, gravel road maintenance. Um, all these all these gravel roads get completed in a cycle and what I mean by when I say cycle is according to average daily traffic truck traffic how much commerce there is on on that road especially in the case of North Lake where the economy is commerce alfalfa hay on gravel roads um, so cycle pertains to the priorities of those type things naturally a truck traffic route is going to need more maintenance especially in the gravel world than uh, a route that might only have three or four residences on it <clears throat> generally four to six weeks for 45 days plus or minus we will have as needed um, <clears throat> and i say as needed because sometimes and we were kind of all chuckling about this. I will get calls that have a concern that, hey, I haven't seen the grader on this road before, and I'll go drive the road, and it, it really isn't needed. But the concern is, is that from the public's perspective and from their theory of property taxes, they believe that that grader should be running. But the property taxes don't pay for the road maintenance. The, the road dollars do registration, gas tax. So some of the concerns were, hey, I haven't seen a grader for, you know, I'll be told three or four months, and, and it's not usually that long. And so it's always, you know, four to six weeks. Um, even when the road doesn't warrant that maintenance, we're, we're not going to go do that unless it actually is warranted. So right. I just wanted to, I wanted to note that to include the theory of there's still a lot of misunderstanding about property taxes and how they're collected, but it doesn't involve the road department. It's registration and gas tax. Um, and then just lastly, on a, on a gravel road, um, I think talking point or worth noting, when we're in the summer construction season where we're, where we're installing all this oil and aggregate that we previously were talking about, it takes all my people. It takes literally all of, all of our employees, myself included, the office manager flags. It takes every operator that we have. So there really isn't um, graders that are being utilized. Now I do have two temporary uh, operators, one in North Lake and one in Warner, Warner Valley, um, that in the event that routes get really rough or really washboarded, we'll send them out and kind of knock off the high spots, so to speak, and keep things moving. But so that the public is aware, you gentlemen are aware that when we're doing the big ticket items of surface treatment, especially, we're out of people. We literally have no more. So, so anyway, I wanted to Note some of those things. Hopefully, that um, helps with some of the concerns and questions. Yeah. And if there's any more from you guys, or if you you heard my um, talking points at the road advisory, so if you thought I missed anything, I can include some of that too. Oh, one more thing. Just <laughs> just noteworthy. I actually did mark this down to try and remember three hundred. $339,000 in calendar year 2020 was spent on man hours of plating gravel roads. So it is a significant amount of dollars that we spend each year on that activity. What was that? 339? 
a good number to remember. And with that, thank you for the time. Absolutely. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Jake, sorry for holding you up. Yeah, uh, you're not sorry. So. <laughs> <laughs>
um, and give it to Ms. Lasley um, today so you guys have that for tomorrow to sign uh, your approval should you approve it. Um, the reason it's not being taken before lip sync is our lip sync doesn't meet until next month. And this is due on the 31st. So due by the 31st. Um, the budget can be seen on page eight. And I've uh, spoke with uh, Daphne. Um, she listed uh, the, this, this funding, the Oregon Department of Education funding under the Oregon Learning, Oregon Early Learning Council. Um, she has listed our $20,000 our reminder there the last couple of years, it's 27. I expect it to be 27 again, um, but we won't know until the legislature um, has settled the statewide budget. So only that number could change, but um, I understand her, her thinking, playing it safe, um, 20,000 as opposed to 27,000. <coughs> And then on the front sheet, my agenda item summary, you'll notice that there was a scratch off and a check yes and the board liaison. Um, Mark listened here yesterday morning when I came down the hallway. So I, when I typed this up, when I came back through, he was there. So I was able to read Mark on this. Okay. And if there's any questions about the program itself, the mentoring program or their budget, uh, Daphne's available by telephone. So we can give her a ring if, if there's questions for her. I guess my question would be, uh, <clears throat> in a perfect scenario, should JCP be under the mentor program, or should it be under mental health? <coughs> or should it be what? Under mental health. The funds are to be used for providers for the betterment of our 12 to 17 year old, 17 year old population. It could be, we could have it spread out, but um, early on, I believe, back in when it was under Commission of Children and Families, I believe they did an RFP, RFQ, uh, whatever, whatever it was back then, um, to solicit some ideas on how to spend the money. So the Board of Commissioners back way back when made that determination to split it amongst three. But then moving forward, they weren't doing the work. Um, so money for nothing. Um, I, I, I could put that and continue to, to submit zeros for nothing being done, whereas under the mental health program and Center for Change, whereas the uh, mentoring program was doing work. Right. So um, at the time, mental health and uh, Center for Change, they weren't real interested in, uh, I don't know, I believe I, I looked at the budget back then, it was a couple thousand bucks, um, five, six thousand dollars a year. To do the work, so um, someone who's doing the work, and I know a lot of the mentoring program is funded by grants. Um, so they're benefiting from it. The yeah, kids are yeah, yeah, absolutely okay. okay. Just and ask. It, it benefits our kids, not just our kids on probation, but we do have kids on probation <laughs> that are involved with the mentoring program. But it also benefits it's, it's countywide. Um, it's countywide benefit because the mentoring program is countywide. So. Um, I believe you sat on the board, Mark. Yeah, I, I sat on the board for a couple of years, three years. And it's a great program. I, I just wish we could help them more than we are. But. So are these dollars, they coming down from the state, are they, are they still kind of being co-mingled with Central and Eastern Oregon Juvenile Justice Consortium? Yeah. And then they're allocated out across the 17 counties. Well, um, yeah, this is allocated out uh, amongst 36 counties. So all 36 counties oh, okay. gets this. We, we are low level, which means our numbers aren't so high. It's all based on right. population. So um, the minimum uh, grant allocation is 60,000 for two years. Okay. Um, so we meet that criteria for the minimum grant, all grant allocation. Gotcha. Right. And I'm assuming all 17 eastern counties, with the exception of maybe Umatilla County, Wasco, and uh, Deschutes, uh -huh. I'm assuming we all probably get the uh, bare minimum. Maybe Union gets a little more. 
based on their population. Okay. It's not population that we have on supervision, it's population countywide of a 12 to 17 year old, um, 17 year old youth, those numbers. Okay. I was, I was curious just because I was reading through a portion of that where it's, it's kind of saying that the budget may allocate, uh, and allocated by established criterion across 17 counties. And then it goes into some specifics in Lake County. But on the next page, I think it's on page three in the first paragraph there towards the top, it starts talking about the recidivism re 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 um, rate, um, but across 36 counties. So whatever you're reading early on, um, we have, uh, we, have, we have two different JCP pots. We have a driving prevention pot for providers, which comes through the uh, Oregon Department of Education slash Youth Development Council. And then we have the Oregon Youth Authority Juvenile Crime Prevention Monies, which we utilize. Um, there's basic and diversion um, dollars that come from, um, there's basic and diversion dollars that come down from the Oregon Youth Authority. So our basic services um, is what we utilize. It's uh, it's about $8,000 a year, um, give or take. We utilize that to help offset our detention costs. Okay. Um, and then the Oregon Youth Authority diversion program, diversion dollars, that's, those are monies used to divert youth from the Oregon Youth Authority and to help um, pay for services in our community. If each individual county was just allocated their certain funding, um, I think ours would probably be about a thousand, two thousand dollars a buy-in, a thousand dollars a year, right. which we couldn't. I mean, that's that's one that's one youth for treatment services, polygraph services, stuff that um, OHP or private insurance doesn't pay. Um, that's what that money's geared towards. We we'd be out of that. We would use that up in the, probably the first three months we got it. So what we do is Kojak is we we pull all of our money together. So now our pot is this much bigger and not every county will utilize that funding um, over the years. We've used, we've utilized the heck out of it, um, especially with our juvenile sex offender population that we have on probation. Not, um, not every, in, not Oregon health plan and not every private insurance will pay for that mm -hmm. type um, treatment or polygraphs. So we're able to submit a plan and uh, the therapist will submit back to us the invoice for the month. We submit it to Kojak and Kojak cuts the therapist a check. So it's uh, it's well worth. So there's two different, there's basic and then bridge dollars. Yeah, no, I actually, that makes a lot more sense to me now. And I actually was misreading several things here, but uh, no, that makes a lot more sense. So your recommendation would be that basically we just accept the plan as written. Absolutely. All right. We can act on that tomorrow. Um, does anyone have any questions? All right, Jay, you're off the hook, it looks like. Really appreciate this. Appreciate all you do. Next item, looking to the back of the room, Dave Berman. Man, it's big shoes to fill right here, Dave. Yeah. I'm not sure. <laughs> Good seeing you. Good, Good day. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I'm here to just kind of give you a little bit of an update with the landfill. I mean, it's been a three month ordeal. But uh, as of uh, this week, I officially got an uh, email from DQ stating TCRL is now effectively, effectively in compliance. Okay, now that's a pretty big milestone for what we've had to deal with. Uh, by effectively, I mean that the construction plan acceptance is supposed to go out before work begins, and it will be a few days until I send the letter. But once the plan acceptance letter is sent, the TCRL will be fully in compliance to my knowledge. Do you mind stating the acronym? Oh. The TCRL, Thomas Creek Landfill, okay. Thomas Creek Road Landfill. Uh, and then and he also says, uh, let me back up. Okay, we, we still got to get approval for the construction plan because it was 
we started construction before it was even approved. We should have never dug that pit. We should have never done nothing. It's there now. It wasn't approved by DEP. So uh, that being said, he doesn't expect an enforcement action from DEQ at this time. But if there is, after the submitting this plan, if there is enforcement, he will contact me and talk it over with me if there is. But right now, there is no fines. So I want to go back three months ago. It was put in the paper that T Thomas Creek Road landfill was going to be fined sixteen hundred dollars or what? I can't quite remember how it went. But yeah, yeah. but there is no fines at this time. Right. 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 So I just wanted to clear that up with you guys because when this all started, it was stated out there that there was, yeah, there was some concern because of the compliance issues and yes. everything. But I think that we've we've amended all those issues yes. now, and I think it's a we're in a good place to move forward. And then uh, that, then that's huge. I mean, that's, right. that's quite the accomplishment for where we were at because it was a train wreck out there. I mean, it just not pointing fingers and one. It just it wasn't just the county; it was DEQ as well because right. they they changed their positions right when we were changing our positions. So things got lost. I mean, so what what I done is I got a hold of DEQ and I just flat told them, "Give me a list of what." Lake County landfill or Thomas Creek Road landfill needs to be in compliance. So he sent me a two page list. I'm pretty overwhelmed. I want to take a sledgehammer and hit myself in the forehead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there was, there was more to that story once we started going through it. Yeah, yeah. but anyway, I think it's kind of joking. Yeah, so as far as that, that's huge. And then we did our we've done our stormwater uh, test, we did our first. Uh, test that everything come back, comes up, no can't, contamination. Uh -huh. So that was a positive thing. And then we'll do another one next quarter, you know, for our first quarter of this month. And so you got to do it every quarter. Yep. And then we uh, we finally got the, our closure plans on how our closure is going to look and our elevations for covering the landfill. And we, my whole crew is on board with it, they understand it. So we're moving forward. We're starting to cover now. Should have been covering a long time ago, but we didn't understand quite how to cover. Now we do. So, so I guess now it's just what questions do you have for me? Because I, you know, I probably missed some stuff that your concerns about the landfill. So, and I'll answer them the best I can. Well, I don't have any concerns. You're you're doing a great job. <laughs> I think that's, that's scary. So now he's got a big head, so you guys have him. I don't know, believe me, I know that we still got some work to do. We do, yeah. But so how's the landfill doing financially? This year we made more money than it's ever made since the county's on. We're, we're way ahead of our finances than we, or our revenue than we thought we were going to. It's kind of scary because we're only allowed so much tonnage in that without mining and we're knocking on the door of it. So we kind of got to watch how we do it. That's why I believe we need to go back to the C and D stuff, the construction and the demolition stuff should be separated somehow. I don't know quite where to go with that because that's taken a lot of our tonnage mm -hmm. to put in the ground into that actual cell. There's the wood products, the telephone poles that are coming in, you know, because I'm not sure where and when they all decided to just put everything in there. But that takes our tonnage into that cell. So that's kind of scary for us. Because if we get to 7,300 ton, we got to put a liner in it. And then that's costly. So. Have you done any further research or heard back from DEQ on the potential of lining at least one cell? Um, we, we talked a little bit about that, I guess, through some of the conversations on disposal of the I talked to ODOT yesterday. Uh, they, I've been in uh, communication with them, and it's going to take a lot. I mean, it's just to do one cell, it's going to take a lot to get it. We, we'd have to write a new plan, because it has to be in the... Uh, it would have to be in the actual plan. In the actual plan to, if we tell, and it, and it depends on the tonnage of of uh, carcasses or animal waste that we put in there it depends on the tonnage. Right. I mean, if we did a, a deer a month, okay, we could probably get away with just putting it in our cell. But if it's a deer a day, which they're telling me it's a deer a day, uh, again, we 
we're kind of pushing on tiny gym, you know how much right. goes in there. Then if if they want to start, the farmers and ranchers want to start putting them in there. Well, right. You know, even more. So it's still on discussion. It came up. And I still, I, I got, uh, I haven't got nothing back with Todd Hess from DQ yet. Okay. So that is just something that it's out there. Yeah, it's out there, and it, it wasn't in the plan to line it unless right. you know, like I said, if if we get to where we're putting more tonnage in there annually, we'll have to line it the next cell. So. When in your discussions with Todd, is it are you bringing up the fact that? Just the animals alone would be in their own pit. Maybe we could do something like that. I haven't brought that. Up. I just I, I just got the conversation started. That would be a conversation I can have. I haven't really took this full on, really pushed it. I just kind of threw it out there. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not, and I can if you guys need me to. Well, the it. reason that I'm thinking of it is for one, we have the wolf committee wanting right. to put carcasses somewhere. Number two. If we have something in place, a meat processor can come back in to Lake County again, and well, it's a little, it's a little bit different. what they're worried about. What what they're worried about with animals is more the vectors. The I'm not saying that word, the vector, and that's where birds come in and take a chunk of meat out, and they fly over, and it lands in Thomas Creek. That's what their main concern is. It isn't that's uh, butcher waste is more fluidy, and I know it's a you know, you got fluid with the dead animal too. So, the vector side of things that's why I we feel like if we had one deer a month or one deer a week or whatever, that we could get away with that the vector thing and the, the liner part. Of it. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, that's kind of where they're more worried about putting a lot of animals in our pit is birds coming in there and taking it away. You know, the contaminate around us. Yeah, but I think we could, I think we could cover that with a cloth, the hole itself to keep the birds out of there. I think. And then also, where would we put this? Where would we put the this special pit with a liner in it? Because right now, in our plan of things, you know, we have a sixty-six year plan for sales. Mm -hmm. So. We'd have to figure that out. Like I said, we'd have to write up a whole new plan. Not a whole new plan, you'd revise the plan you already have, but we'd have to still bend it. Yeah. yeah. So it's not stopping, but let me find out from Todd or just, you know, and I'll call the other landfills to see what they do. Right. You know, I, I can do that too. I haven't done that yet. I'm, I've got a pretty good relationship with the Creek County guy. So I will call him and ask him. So, well, I know he takes the butcher waste, and it's a certain, and they go by the pounds right. of, of any of those dead animals. But they're a line length, though, yes, correct? Yes, yeah. they have to be. Yeah. In, in order to dump the because dead they're, waste. Uh, yeah. We're 6,500 a year, they're 43,000 a year. Mm -hmm. So they automatically have to line it. Not because of the butcher waste, they just have to. Right. And they die along the tons. Mm -hmm. Well, appreciate what you're doing out there, yeah, and uh, I think that uh, just exploring that option with uh, animal waste is worth checking into. Sure, and we'll see where it takes us. Okay, right. and then I will probably come with you guys on a later date with uh, individually. I probably won't do it here, but talk about the C and D stuff to where our tonnage isn't so high. I mean, we still get we still get the dollars of the tonnage, but it's put in that landfill. And it's we're like I said, we're knocking on that door right now. Right. Time to us for annually. If we keep and also this COVID thing, this last year, a lot of people did a lot of yard work, a lot of debris cleanup because they were home. Mm -hmm. And so we got a lot more time. So we don't burn anymore out there. No. They stopped no, that. We can't have any open thing at the landfill. We might want to look in to see how we can grind it and that's stockpile it. That's and right we use it for use it for a lot of things. You can use it for cover, you can use it for mulching. You can't use it for the main cover, but you can put it in there and use it for a little bit of a cover and you still have to do your dirt cover. But yeah. And we're talking about mainly the biomass, the tree branches and leaves and different things like uh, that. Sheetrock. Sheetrock. Oh. Uh, 
branches, plumbers, you know, these people that tear down homes come in because they, they, they're they just filling up our landfill. And that's, and that's heavy stuff. So right. That, and just on, on paper, it just shows our time to use. Yeah. It's ground sheet rock. They use it for soil. Because they, right. they used to separate it. I don't know what changed that or I haven't did the research far enough to go. Who changed that? Who decided to put all that in the pit? So I don't know. Mm-hmm. And there might be a reason why they had to do it. That's why I got to find out with DEQ too. But I don't see. To me, that's just they're taking our space for our uh, solid waste. Right. And yes. how we need the solid waste room. We don't need the solid waste room. What's the status of the um, compactor? Uh, the compactor is, I think I went to each one of you guys told you that we found another issue and it was a little bit more costly than we first anticipated, but it's still a savings for mm-hmm. the long run for us for NASA compactor. Uh, it ran into some more head problems where they had to put some new seals in it they didn't predict, you know, so. But it will be there, they said, at least by April 1st or somewhere in there. It was March 15th, but since they ran into these problems, they pushed it out a week or two. Sounds good. And then uh, we've got a great maintenance program on the equipment now. I've got them doing weekly check, make sure they check the oil, don't put oil in the wrong spot. Matter of fact, I don't want to put any oil in right now. I do it, or I send Jeremy or Greg out there to do it. Because <laughs> I deal with it too, what, two in two weeks? <laughs> the wrong oil in the wrong hole? <laughs> yeah. So. It's not good. Well, thank you, Dave, for all that you've done for us. You've saved our bacon on that. I so. mm-hmm. appreciate it. So, what's your challenge. biggest uh, challenge right now out there? Uh, Coming forward. Right now, the wind. The wind. The pick, getting garbage. That's because, uh, like I said, we're, at first it was getting us in fine. Now it's the spread of garbage, the way they design that. You know, we get that south wind. Well, these big trucks come in there and they dump and it just takes it and sends it north. Right to the fence. Right to the fence, over the fence. Now I've got crews out there walking our property line fence, picking up garbage. And the only way we could do it, you know, I've been trying to get them to tip in the tipping shed, but then they fill that box up. So they're full in there and they got to go dump the box. Well, they dump the box. Well, the same thing. It's just, okay, do I let sanitation fling it all over or do we do it? That's my biggest challenge. I've been working on how to do that. On this next cell, I want to try to maybe put the dump area maybe on the west side of the pit to start out. You could eventually you have to take that out and move it to the north. But to get it started, I'd like to have you pull in and dump from the west side so if the wind does blow, it still blows it down into the pit. The way we're going to hang it. And I can sit down and then you guys in the video and show you on the map what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. That might be something we look at. On our next cell, be a little more sheltered. Yeah, it just that uh, if you get that south wind, yeah, you're still going to get the foam <coughs> that's going to blow it into the pit instead of in front of the trucks and head north. Right. And then I'm still waiting for pl- uh, parties to get out there to finish covering the, the old C and D pit, and then pulling out and getting the cell two into elevation height. Still waiting for that. It's just right now it's so muddy they they just sink. There's no bottom in that. Those cells out there are just a mud mass. Mm. We gotta wait for that. It might not be until June, but hopefully our pit holds up mm. for garbage. Mm. Uh, DEQ will be here April 14th to inspect. So, kind of okay. got some things there to do. Garbage pickup. I've got the guys out there. I want them picking up garbage every day. Take Hard in the snow when the wind's blowing 100 miles an hour. Can't pick up garbage. You know, I tried and it's just, you don't get nowhere <laughs> with the wind. And then when there's snow, you, you can go through there and pick up garbage, but when it melts, you got to go right back there and do it again. So, right. The winter is tough out there to keep garbage picked up. And then with that wind, it's no one's fault. It's not the guy's fault. It's no one's fault. No. It's just, it's the wind. It's the wind. I've tried to take, I've got those cages, those stand up cages, like I'm going to get, and I'm going to just try this next week. I'm going to, when they back up, Take those gates and slide them over right next to the truck, mm-hmm. close as they can get without interfering, and maybe that'll catch some of that too. 
Yeah. yeah. It, the wind is the wind. I mean, it's it's going to do what it's going to do. I remember you know, over in Summer Lake, of course, we have really bad wind, but I remember a couple, some years back, we were, I was sitting in the dining room of our house looking out the window, and all of a sudden I saw a roof go past our property <laughs> <laughs> at a good 60 miles an hour. <laughs> just just hitting all the corners on it and it was just on this giant roll through the sagebrush and, they, and we eventually found it about three miles away yeah oh yeah it just it is what I, it is i was driving down 140 right for andy hill road and we're driving i'm heading towards clam i was going to was heading that way pretty soon the wind is just blowing us on yeah. pretty soon i seen a trampoline roll across the highway <laughs> 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 just, yeah. 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 same type of thing yeah yeah. So anyway, it is. So, all right. Well, thank you. I really appreciate it, Dave. No, I think well, we all do. And like I said, I'll be in, probably in here to talk to you about some other things. Yeah, sounds good. See how those things. Yeah. Still some work. We're, I mean, we're not there, but we're getting there. No, but you always stay in really good contact with us, and you always talk to us about a lot of the stuff that you have going on. But it's good to do meetings like this where the public can get a chance to kind of hear some of this too. Right. So. We we'll give you an airport one. I'll give you a. I uh, don't have a railroad. Well, kind of a railroad. I'll come in. We'll have a railroad meeting on Thursday. Yeah, is it? Thursday. Yeah. We'll have another. Okay, sounds good. And I can kind of get that. And I can give you some more updates on some things. You know, the right. courthouse stuff we've been doing here. Uh, I won't get into it now, but the, uh, we got the yeah. grinder all put in. All right. The system. Thanks. So I'll give you guys some more updates on that on the later day. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. Yep. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, so we've got a timed item at 10 o'clock um, for the Roundup Tavern discussion. Was anyone coming for that? You're supposed to. Okay. Well, I'll hold off and wait till I get here then. Um, we can move on to Oregon Cattlemen's membership discussion. Um, so I brought, I brought this up. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think it would be good for us to belong to Oregon Cowboys Association since most of our county is supported by the cattle industry. Um, and I just wanted to, them to know that we're part of it. Uh, we want to do everything we can to help um, because the cattle market right now is some of the worst it's been ever mm -hmm. and so i just want the county to be a part of it and show support to our community um, throughout the city so i was looking for amy hutchinson is she coming today she's supposed to okay okay um okay. what was it a year ago they got me. Then you, I might recommend one of you guys have POEs on point of contact, maybe, okay. even yeah. though the county would. So that's under associate council on that level, membership level. Mm. Because that was my what, yeah. be my question. I wasn't sure what we'd fall under. I would I would recommend one fifty. Yeah. Um, I think it's a good idea. I support that. I think you want to be contact if you don't want to be. Okay. And Mike, Todd Nash will be the upcoming president. He's commissioner in Wild County. So. Are some of the other counties uh, members? They have memberships. I know that years ago we used to be, I, I believe, but I don't know about any other counties. I'm sure we'll allow them. Right. The Carney County is. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't see any issues with it. Um, and the Legal Council doesn't have any, doesn't see any potential issues or anything. Would you guys like to or just go ahead and kind of 
I don't see any issue with, like you were saying, Lake County back in the day was a member of it. And as an associate council, we should not have any contracts or anything with them. So, right. Other than membership, so I didn't see any interest with the council. But, yeah. Okay. Um, I don't have any problem with it. Uh, we'll, we can act on it tomorrow unless there's more questions. Sounds good. Okay. Perfect. Um, so Amy is the one that's going to be talking about the Roundup Tavern? Or Amy and Francie are supposed to be here. And Ken. Okay. Uh, let's go on. Let's knock a few things out. Wolf depredation. Uh, compensation committee application. Um, Ferry Rodney or Rodney Ferry. Sorry, I did the last thing first, first thing, last thing. Um, so uh, we needed a person on the committee um, to replace Dan Henderson. Dan Henderson mm -hmm. and uh, suggested Mr. Ferry, and he was obliged and, and participated well in our Wolf Committee. Um, and this would get him uh, officially on the committee. Okay. He uh, provides good input as far as uh, veterinary uh, experience, plus he's a gentleman himself and uh, had good uh, good input for the group. Okay. Um, the only thing, when we had this I was wondering if we can have some of the, the applicants at least put on exactly what committee that they want to be on. We always, we have other, but it might be nice. I don't know, this is just for discussion. We could have, you know, specify what the committee is it that they're going, that they want to be on. We all know that he wants to be on the Wolf Committee, but there's nothing on here. If you were to go back through records or anything, there's nothing on here to tell someone what committee he was actually wanting to be on it. I think on our other, we need to just put list what that other is. Yeah, list other. That's all we'd have to do. Specify change. other. Yeah, just put a blank simple. line to the right of it. Yeah, so that they did specify. Least. And then, because I didn't know what committee rounds would be. <laughs> <laughs> I see so, these other applications. Well, I, they uh, I mark differently. I've too. never met Rodney. I just I kind of figured that's what it was because it had the the Wolf Depredation Compensation Committee application on the actual agenda. So I figured this is what it had to be um, because it was an application form. But uh, if someone were to go through old records or something and wanted to see what who was on <clears> what <throat> committees and the actual application, it doesn't actually specify what the committee's for. So, or what committee he's wanting to serve on. So maybe we can make even make a note on that original or whatever, and specify as for the wolf committee. Um, okay, we can act on that tomorrow if there's no other questions. I just thought for work record keeping sake that might be good to have. Or we could just uh, keep it to where other committees as assigned. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're signed up. <laughs> yeah, right. We're just going to write in what we want. <laughs> we, yeah. we, we have we to on the board. We have to on this one, so we put you there. Yeah. <laughs> Lucky him. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, next up, um, ASA Advisory Committee applications. I had a I think I've got almost everyone else that we need on that committee except for the Lapine doctor, um, who is uh, the uh, um, primary care advisor for the north end of the county. And uh, they were going to get him an application, and we were hoping to have it back in another week. So do we have somebody on ASA in North Lake besides... Like in Silver Lake, Fort Rock area? So we have Keith Little. He's Silver Lake. Though. He's Silver Lake. And we and we have uh, Jamie Roscoe, which is also Silver Lake, but they service that area along with the Christmas yeah, Valley. They, 
But they don't serve the same area as Christmas Valley. No, they don't. I can't remember exactly where that line is. If Christmas Valley covers Fort Rock or if Silver Lake does, I think. But I know Silver Lake goes up north. I think. I think like Silver Lake Fort Rock up. is. There's a line right in there somewhere. Yeah. I'm not positive where that is. I was thinking the Pitcher Lane was kind of the main uh, dividing line there for the ASA. I have to look at the maps again. But Pitcher Lane goes straight up in between Fort Rock. It goes right up through it. So I'm just wondering if we need to have somebody from... What about this uh, Sue Inglesby? Well, Sue Inglesby is Christmas Valley Director for the EMS. So she covers that area as well, you know, whatever they're running up through, that's... Do you have a Fort Rock if they're going out. application from her? Yes, last one. Very, very bad. Oh, you know what? Actually, I don't have it in here in my neck. So you have it though. Yeah. yeah. I picked it up. I knew she had it. No worries. I have John Jones, Ross Callahan, and yeah. <laughs> no worries. So <laughs> no, so it's Sue, okay. Sue would work. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah so I just didn't have it in my. Okay. Opinion. Yeah. So we have we have four applicant okay. applications. We have Ross, we have John Jones, Keith Little, and Sue Inglesby. I didn't even look to see because I, I was the one who um, Pony Express them down here. So um, we can act on that tomorrow unless you guys have any questions about any of the applicants. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Uh, also, uh, just as a quick update on that, I believe. Um, Silver Lake and Christmas Valley will be giving us their um, request for a letter of support on a variance. The same thing that we did for the ASA down here for their variance so that they can have regular EMTs or paramedics or two in advanced yeah. life support. Yeah. So they will, each one of the ASAs will be putting in for that request. Um, Good now, so we'll be. I'm hoping we can do them all at once. And uh, we did have a very good uh, meeting in Summer Lake uh, the other week. Uh, um, Paisley ASA expressed um, their concerns about the, the ambulance service area plan uh, to reduce it in size. They felt it was too complex and there was too much stuff in it. The problem that uh, uh, Troy and myself, we're kind of looking at is if we start taking things out of that plan, um, the state's going to potentially refuse it and they're going to want some of those things in because they require a, some of those things included in the plan. Um, I think a lot of the things uh, that there's concerns about um, can be addressed through their mutual aid agreements. And that brings me to the next point is. Um, in the past, uh, there has been ASA um, mutual aid agreements between all four ASAs, but there hasn't been for, I think, 20 years. I hope I'm speaking correctly, maybe plus. Um, but we are in the process of getting uh, the Lakeview Warner Valley ASA um, back into the same mutual aid agreement that the other three have with each other. So they will all be connected and they can all work together and have those agreements between each other. So do we need to have that agreement with like Harney County, Klamath County, and Monoc? It's kind of up to them, to the, to the ambulance service provider to, and I think they do have some of those. I think Silver Lake has one with Lapine. Um, I think Christmas Valley has had, they've, they've kind of been on the rocks with um, Lapine and getting an actual uh, agreement in place. I can't remember what 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 the status was with that, but um, it's I, I believe it's up to the ASAs to make those agreements with the other ASAs and other counties, <coughs> and that kind of keeps us out of it too because they know what they need and they know what you know, their relationships are, and they can kind of work together. Um, we were briefed in Christmas Valley prior meeting. 
they stated that when they do an ambulance run, they pretty much have to go to the fine or to bend every time. Oh, yeah, so, to go all the way to bend, yeah. But what that agreement would be with, with the fine or whatever, I don't know. Yeah, and they, they typically are the ones that kind of work those out. And they have done a fantastic job for, for many, many years. It's just, uh, it's really good to kind of get everyone back to the table again and um, all four ASAs, ASAs talking. Um, but eventually I think that we will be having, uh, we will see all four of our ASAs in mutual aid agreements with each other. And uh, we'll get this, the full plan for Lake County approved and sent off to the state once uh, we can all kind of reach agreement as to what the plan should be. And they'll get it to us for approving and uh, if there's any concerns we have, whatever we can go from at that time, and then then we submit it to the state. Or Daniel Tag would submit it to the state because he's the uh, he's the administrator of the uh, of the ordinance and the, the plan. Copy. All right. Uh, last item aside from our discussion, which we could table till tomorrow if they don't if they aren't able to show up. Uh, Sharon Lightly and uh, Company LLC uh, ratification. Um, we'd be ratifying this today, correct, Ellen? Please. Yes, because I, I think we all had a chance to kind of look over it. I don't see any problem with it. Um, and I think through some of the emails, you guys said the same. So, whatever you guys want to do. Do we want to give just a little background on this? Sure, absolutely. She did the brief us uh, last meeting, right? Mm -hmm. Just follow up. So Sharon Lighty is a grant writer. Um, we have needs as a county different times of the year uh, for grants to be uh, that we'd like to put in for. She's providing professional services. Um, she's used by the library board and other uh, groups out in the community and is well respected, does a good job and has pretty good success rate. Um, and therefore, we'd like to, without hiring a person full time or part time, this gives us an opportunity to uh, use her services as needed. So, was that a motion? <laughs> well, it's, it's just the ratification motion to ratify would be what I entertain. Um, it's already been signed, <coughs> so we're good to go. I'll make a motion to accept the ratification agreement with Sharon Lighty and Company LLC. Second. Uh, motion's been seconded to ratify the agreement with Sharon Lightly and Company LLC in Lake County uh, for grant writing opportunities in the future. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Oh, I didn't ask for further discussion, but um, is there any further discussion? Negative. <laughs> okay. We need to put her to work. Sounds good. Um, with that, uh, we do not have anything else other than liaison updates and uh, I recommend a five minute recess. We can we can do that. We can take a recess. Would you, would you like a 15 minute recess? And we'll maybe give our folks a little bit more time to show up. Maybe we can even contact them and ask them if uh, somebody just came to the It's uh, we can take a five minute recess. Oh. Hey. Let's go ahead and take a five minute recess real quick. Okay, uh, we're going to take a quick five minute recess. <laughs> and then we'll you don't mind. We'll That's fine. Super yeah. quick. Okay, five minute recess. We'll reconvene at 10.20. Uh, uh, no, we haven't been pasted. Uh, not not pasted, but I'm telling Rachel. Do you want the door shut? But they've been looking for a few. No, I can not have everyone. Just in case. And that would help because we're only DSM once we're related to this rally. Yeah, right. Yeah, and it's in Silver Lake, it's all there is, is DSL. I mean, we, because internet is not working for us. So, you know, there's no really interaction there. Encryption is probably another option. I know, I know. There's nothing. That's why I got up earlier and I went to close it. 
Um, let me, Chris Bice, okay. Uh, Chris, uh, uh, no, no, time is 10 20. Yeah. We're going to reopen the session. Yeah, he, just tell him. We've already talked. Um, tell him to circle back. <coughs> so, yeah, uh, the first I, I guess we've only got really one item left Roundup Tavern discussion, Amy. Okay. Uh, well, I was just hoping for an update. I know that Melanie and has been over there talking with Hank, so um, I just wanted to hear what was happening, first of all. Right. And right. And second of all, the, the objective is a youth center, or a youth place. And the Roundup Tavern may not be the place, may or not, but if you guys know of other options, mm -hmm. And that comes out of like we've had kind of a, a youth task force, this like ad hoc that we kind of put together. Um, so it's the library prevention, OSU extension, the mentor program, youth investment, school. the school. And so we kind of, you know, we meet monthly and it kind of grew out of actually, I started it, I'll be honest, because I was struggling so much at the library because our, our town here has a, a lot of activities for youth but not necessarily a lot of free activities for youth or activities that are easy for youth who do not have um, like solid investment from their home life to enable them to be a part of. And so, uh, so we were seeing at the library a group of kids who are really kind of unserved outside of school. Um, and so, so in, in a problem solving effort, I was like, okay, let's, let's all talk. And so what kind of grew out of that is this idea that, you know, it would be really great to have a place where we could have programming type activities that could kind of keep them busy, give them positive activities to participate in rather than kind of, you know, roaming the streets at will. Um, and the, the facilities that we do have are a little bit limited, especially right now with the extra restrictions, but even, even without that, like for example, the library, we could do, um, you know, our tables, we could do at most 32 at a time for an activity at tables because mm -hmm. that's just how big the room is. Um, right. The OSU extension room is even a little smaller than ours. So it's kind of like just putting the feelers out there, like where where could we do this kind of thing? What do you guys see and how involved do you want to be in such a, a process? To help facilitate. So why the roundup tip? That was just, it, it's a great size, right? And it's downtown, so it's real easy walkable to the, from the school and from the neighborhoods. Um, and it's a, it was one big open room. And so you could, it, it was just kind of was a nice size and shape, really. And it was a great, it was a great old building too. I mean, it had, it has like that kind of charm. Like, because one of the things is, you know, I think it's really hard It'd be a really hard sell to do this type of thing in a dedicated building. So it almost has to be like some kind of mixed use building, right? Mm -hmm. And so we've talked about, well, could it be something that is partnered with the school or maybe the alternative school could be in during the day and then after school programming could happen after school. And you can do that with flexible <laughs> furnishings. Or could it be something like, you know, it was a town building that you could, um, that could be available for after school programming, but could also be available for community events. So it's got all these long walls. They could do art shows or speakers, or people could rent it for graduation parties or weddings. And so it just has that kind of nice aesthetic as part of the attraction to that particular yeah. building. And maybe that's not the building, but that was to answer your question. Yeah. If, if you guys come across ideas. Well, I mean, the building needs repair. The yes. roof needs to be replaced. Mm -hmm. um, we, of course, pulled that mural out because of the water damage and everything else that was right. taking place. Um, so is the mural coming over here then? That'd be awesome. It's, down there. it's so, here. It's here? Yeah. Oh, exciting. I'm going to have to go so, wander around. Yeah. I've never done to look <laughs> yeah, at it. Go down the uh, Memorial Hall. It's up on the wall already. Nice. Um, they're still kind of finalizing, you know, trying to get it set up there perfectly and kind of dress it all up but right it's uh it's up awesome so so the, the problem is is that we all want to save the roundup right yeah mm -hmm. the problem is is that it's going to cost three hundred and fifty thousand or more 
to do it. Mm -hmm. And when Mel and I and my brother went over there to rescue the mural, yes, water was pouring in oh. from the from the roof, uh -huh. the floor. I, being my size, I was afraid because the floor was sagging. And yeah. So, oh, I've been in there. I can imagine. <laughs> so, I mean. It, if we had a magic wand and 350,000, I would be more than happy to do that. The, the problem is. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have a magic wand? What? Uh, well, well, we can't. She might, she, she might add a brainstorm. You we want to can go for it. use the infrastructure money to repair it. What for, infrastructure money? From the, from the newest stimulus repair. Do you want to use all that money on that? <laughs> Just say. Well, and another potential idea is like, what's the minimum that needs to happen to keep the water out in order to gain time to investigate other possibilities? Well, that was that was the discussion, you know, a year ago, really. And I don't know if the minimum is going to suffice anymore. Yeah. Um, I think at this point. It's we more have than a tarp job. Yeah. Yeah, I know it's more than a tarp job, but it's also probably not three hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> it's just you're looking at a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and at that point, you're kind of you, you'd probably be better off just replacing the, the roof and doing it right the first time. Right. Because if you, we wait too much longer, or if we can't figure something out, uh, we are at risk of that wall, the walls caving in too, yeah. and jeopardizing the other structures around it. Mm -hmm. And so we really would like to move on it but it's also on the foreclosure list it's ready to be sold we're limited as to how much we can do mm -hmm. um it's what's the price down to right now it's down 40 percent down 60 percent down 60 percent two hundred percent of cost that, that's the the maximum we can Discount. drop the cost yeah, by law going to sell for like eighteen thousand if it sells yeah Mm -hmm. uh, we okay. tried to give it to LCP. We tried to give it to the town of Lakeview. Right. Unfortunately, they have the same problem we do. Yeah. And I'm not here. I'm here to support the planning a youth place. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So and what, I just, what about the memorial home? I think that could be a great place for the for the interim at least. I mean, I don't know if y'all want to hear that <laughs> coming through the floor, but I mean, I think that could be. Because how many square feet is that downstairs? It's a bunch, and it hardly gets used. Yeah, it's per, it's pretty substantial. It's bigger than the Roundup Tower, in my opinion. Yeah. 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 Is it? It's more than two thousand square feet. Oh, yeah, it makes it. This was thirty. It would be like probably not thirty-two hundred because there's the kitchen and the restroom and the lobby. But we it's, were thirty-two hundred when we were over here, so right. it would be. It's, yeah. It passed that wall basically, and all mm -hmm. the way to the other side. Yeah. Well, I guess it would be basically. Well, yeah, and then there's like the veterans office. So there's just like a little bit of chunks taken out, but still, that's probably, I mean, easy, at least 2,500 square feet. And we have the exhibit buildings at the fairgrounds that mm -hmm. we can well, use. The only thing about that is then you have transportation issues to go back and forth. But this Going is, I mean, there. this would be also walkable. Um, and so, um, I think that could be a great place to get started for sure and then see how. <laughs> How much interruption <laughs> I mean, running people well, around. Well, most of your activities are going to be after school. Right? Yeah. And so. It's not the whole well, day long. Yeah, and most of us won't be here at that time. Yeah. You know? so. I could use help for student transportation, spending those dollars too. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, you're turnkey ready. Yeah. Down below. Yeah. So. Yeah. You're well, talking big. Big work. Yeah, well, and I think that in, like, I have two purposes for being here. So one is this with the, the youth center, but I also just have a soft spot for that Roundup Tavern. So I just want to urge if there's any way we can save it rather than let it be demolished, I would really like that. It was the first place I bought a legal adult bed. Really? <laughs> See, now that's a good memory. He specified the legal part. Right? Yes. <laughs> Only not the first time he had an adult beverage. I also had that same thought. So, yeah. And so then if we were to use your space, like what are, are there like paperwork we have to fill out? Are there special rules? Are there 
So we can talk later. We don't have to take that time up now. While we're on the septic, uh, <coughs> mm -hmm. we need it here for the disadvantage. Yes. Uh, I'm a mentor myself, and the young guy doesn't have things to do, which means they find other things to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Christmas Valley also needs, so just for you back of your mind, mm -hmm. if something pops up during your course. They need a facility or they need a mentor? They, they need something for youth activity. Same as we do here. Yeah, more. I think programming specifically. Now, the old lumber run of the pro bill, that could be a basketball court inside too. It <laughs> totally could. It's got the space. Or maybe not the height. <laughs> but the kids are vertically challenged anyway. Yeah, yeah. Well, and our, like, kind of our, our target range of age has been sort of from like mid to upper elementary through middle school. In, in the activities we've done kind of so far, because those are the ones that seem the most the most at loose ends when they don't have strong family support at home, so. Yeah. So are you, are you gonna work with Jim Nickel? Yeah, Jim's a part of our group, yep. Yep, and we actually, I don't know if he's told you guys, but we're doing a, a, a youth leadership summit this, or if Francie's told you guys yet, but we're doing a youth leadership summit this summer up at Cottonwood which is actually for high school kids. Um, and it's coming, you know, the budget's coming out of prevention dollars, but it's a little bit, in part, that same target audience, but just a little older, and to get them involved in um, having a voice around, I mean, it's problem gambling money, so there will be that vein of it. But also, like, you know, kind of be in a place where everyone that's around you is positive and where you can learn some new skills and how to be active and engaged in your community in a way that can be positive and make a difference. So... That's coming up this July. So um, I'll encourage um, Francie to talk to you about transportation dollars, though, because yes, she she was kind of still chewing on that particular problem. So I'll send her an email. Thanks. Were you thinking about transportation to like the fairgrounds? Or? I don't care. <laughs> She's like, I'm thinking about driving people around. <laughs> I have to spend 1% of my STIF funds on student transportation. Oh, on student transportation specifically. Mm -hmm. Is it at least 1% or, yeah. So, and with so, COVID, it's been a little bit of a challenge. Like, we've sponsored different, like, booster trips and things. Yeah. But I'm glad to help out yeah because yeah. this one the youth leadership summit is actually countywide so it'd be some people coming down from north lake and paisley yeah. and then lakeview out to camp cottonwood so it could be uh it could eat up some money for you that would be great thank you. yeah and it would be july so it would be after this fiscal year end unless you could that's okay okay yeah <laughs> that'd be great camp cottonwood's a great spot to have that yeah, we're really excited. I think it's going to be really fun. Like um, Jim and Brianne, and we're talking about like different, you know, Dutch oven cooking and things we can do around the campfire. Um, we're hoping to rent maybe some paddle boards. There's definitely canoes out there. Maybe we can rent some mountain bikes up to come up one of the days. And then a lot of kind of um, workshop activities about, you know, like learning kind of who you are and where you have spheres of control in your own life and um, positive behaviors like some brain development and techniques that you can use for I just, can use them on that. Right? Do you need to come, Mark? It would be fun. <laughs> so I think it'll be really fun. It'll be a nice mix and it'll be um, a good experience for the kids, which is what it's all about. So hopefully it'll be successful. <laughs> we'll see. It's our first run out of the gate. So I don't I don't know exactly how it's gonna go, but yeah. I have to go to something. My interest in yeah, the youth good. aspect is not just that they are youth, but they are people who will be sitting in your seat tomorrow, mm -hmm. leaders of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So if we can promote them today, their benefits tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. So it's settled then. Uh, you're going to scrounge around and find that 300000 or repair the roof on the roundabout. <laughs> I've been looking. I really have been I know, I heard the, the library's got tons of money. I know, right? <laughs> totally. It's just coming out our ears. We don't know how to spend it. Sorry. That was too much. <laughs> well, uh, 350 is, uh, I'll change the septic a little bit if we can cross it. Yep, I'm done. If you've got 350000 we'll look at 500000 for another project also. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Since we're chucking money. Yeah. Since we're chucking money out. As you know, we got internet out to Warner Valley. Yeah. We're still working on uh, cell phone service plus. Mm -hmm. The next deficit area we're working on is Summer Lake. Between Paisley and Christmas Valley area and going all the way up. With the yeah. our, our DOF funds. But those funds are for a residential hookup. Picture Rock Pass is not a residential hookup. Mm -hmm. But we need that for redundancy, mm -hmm. and we also need it for bandwidth capacity increase. And working with two different entities, who's probably not all, but because they're negotiating, I hate to say it in front of public because they're still negotiating, but you know who they are. You don't have to then. <laughs> if it costs a million bucks to come over for one company, they may be willing to provide the second company to put a conduit in. If the second company split the cost, let's say hypothetically a million bucks to come over, the other company needs 500,000. 500,000 is not part of the grant that you receive from FCC. Yeah. So we're looking at what entities can contribute a little bit, nobody can contribute 500. Yeah. But if you know of entities, like I'd be contacting the state interoperability emergency. Uh, we also work on going to work with the consultant. But uh, bandwidth and redundancy, because as you know, what we have now is two dead end fibers. Yep. One at Christmas Day and one here. Christmas and we was able to get some bandwidth out of Central Link back in 2015, but that's being eaten up as technology enhances bandwidth demand increases. Mm -hmm. So both redundancy and bandwidth is critical for our county. Mm -hmm. So if you know of different little pots of money. Well, I know Governor Brown has legislation pending for equity, and a lot yeah. of that's going towards yeah. rural access. Um, yeah. I talked to. 500,000 is an encumbrance on that, though. But so, a part. Yeah, and I talked to Annette Leva about the new federal um, internet access funding that was just um, approved. And she is going to keep me in the loop, and so hopefully we can become a community partner, mm -hmm. and hopefully we'll get some money here for that too. Yeah. But as county commissioners, we carry a lot of weight in soliciting other partners mm -hmm. for adding up X amount of dollars. We've heard that you know from uh, Senator Whiteson's group, whatnot. This is. This is big, and I don't know. You know, there's going to be opportunity out there. I think in the future, they're, they're going to push for more and more opportunities for rural Oregon. It's, a, it's important on their list. So. And I think getting that that last piece of connection <coughs> is really critical because then yeah. instead of having two dead ends, if one end goes down, we can pull from the other end. Right. You know, so like yeah. right now, if the line between us and Klamath gets cut. Or just so well until they get that sucker repaired. Right. Whereas if, if we were connected, we could pull from the north rather right. than the south in those situations. So and it can go it can go multiple ways. Mm -hmm. Right now, if you're going through fiber at the school in Paisley, it comes down to Lakeview, shoots over to Klamath, goes all the way up. And if you just want to get it to Christmas Valley from Paisley, it goes all the way up to 97, cuts over, and comes back down to CV. And that's uh, quite a few weak points in there. So exactly, one of the and I think that, and we don't have the bandwidth. Yeah, yeah, we just don't. Right, and I think so, it's an economic development issue too, right? Because absolutely. we can't provide yeah. those. Yeah, it's not just constant, for, reliable, strong connections. Right. it's difficult to encourage businesses to invest. And we were really hoping back 2019, 20, yeah, maybe there would be some opportunity with Zale. Mm -hmm. Seeing if we could break out because they are bringing that fiber down, but there really just isn't. That's not where we're going to get that redundancy. Mm -hmm. so. But that's one player that may share the trench because of nagging. Yeah, well, I, I know. <laughs> hey, good nag. Well, we, I encourage we've, all, we've been on those committees. We've been talking to Zao for you know since what late 2019. Uh, I was talking to him back yeah 17, 18. Right, yeah. and I know the vice president. And he's supportive, but he's not the ultimate decision maker. Mm -hmm. But it comes down to sharing costs. That's what the was about. I'm glad to hear there's some opportunities in the pipeline too. That right, and I think you know there's there's some opportunities with Starlink. 
and everything else that hopefully we'll be able to mm -hmm. come on bring some service to the county but the uh, rural areas start making another road to help with the distant rural homesteads right because there's no way of getting fiber to a lot of the homes yeah. in lake right. county regardless yeah. but as far as creating inter internet redundancy that's a that's a connectivity issue between chris <coughs> county and paisley mm -hmm. and it's only 10 miles the thing is for another company to put an on trench in that'd be cost prohibitive million bucks because you don't get a return on a redundant pipe over picture like that so and we need to today we got like I mentioned earlier back in 2015 we got central link to boost our bandwidth that really helped because that provided opportunity to go to Paisley and Warner Valley but as technology just keeps expanding bandwidth capacity is in greater and greater demand. So are you, hearing, and we don't. are you hearing anything about satellite? Are we low elevation satellites? Yeah. What was mentioned earlier. Starlink. Yeah. It's the, uh, that's they're still testing, they're getting better and better. Somebody just shot some rockets last week. Yeah, yeah. that was but, yeah, that was SpaceX. SpaceX. Yeah. But that that's more for dispersed but it's not for redundancy. Right. Yeah. And it's not for capacity. Bandwidth. They might help moderate. Yeah. You know, if more people use that service, it takes a Right. It'll take pressure off the, the infrastructure right. and everything else. I mean, yeah. we're talking about. But it solves the redundancy. Yeah. They were talking about 150 gigabytes per second, I think, on Starlink uh, about a year ago. Mm -hmm. Now they're talking by the end of 2021, they're expecting up to 300 gigabytes per second. Mm -hmm. download upload speeds uh, which is pretty significant being mm -hmm. that the best internet in lakeview right now is between four to five megabytes per second um it's a uh, pretty substantial um mm -hmm. i mean satellite internet's been around for a long time but it's been very high highly complex large satellites just a couple of them up in the up in the sky uh but then you know now they're looking at a network of mm -hmm hundreds of them, thousands. Uh, so it, they have a shorter lifespan than fiber. So. Mm -hmm. But fiber is the ultimate that we need redundancy and capacity. Just for simple things, you know, even like our hospitals being able to get x-rays exactly. to places in Bend, the Deschutes County or whatever, and our schools, remote schooling. Exactly. And I think that's going to be, I mean, this is my if I could predict the future, which I am not psychic, but I feel that the kind of the direction it's heading, this fiber is that core trunk for institutions to right. ensure that they can conduct their business, that they can yeah. serve the public, and then the satellites like a consumer layer on right. top. That's how I kind of see it playing out. Right. So it's important that we have both both sides. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah when my wife quarantines me out to my property along the plush cut off road how will require satellite. <laughs> right. Go <laughs> sign up right away. Yeah. But the hospital needs hardcore fiber. Exactly. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, they can't rely on satellite. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And the libraries so, and you guys here in this yeah, building, facilities the schools and, and institutions, yeah, yeah, they'll be mainly centered on the on the grid. Mm -hmm. so, but if you have knowledge or influence Nobody can come up with 500,000, but well, somebody can. But they can know different entities that can contribute. Yeah, I know yeah. we don't We don't have 500,000 we can contribute to this right now. But you may have 50. Yeah. <laughs> right. It's getting kind of tight this year. <laughs> but anyway, no, I appreciate you guys coming in. No. Yeah. Uh, youth is tomorrow's leaders. Yeah, and I appreciate helping us find a, a place to start. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, no, I think the Memorial Hall will be a good place to start for now, but I, I, we're definitely still looking for opportunity and direction for what we're going to, what's going to happen with the Roundup Tavern. Yeah. But it's a, it is concerning. Mm -hmm. We all want to preserve it, but right. it's not simple. I know, I, I recognize it's a complex project and just a, 
very here to say we all love it. And if there's a way to work through those complexities, that'd be awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'll put it this way: I never had a lick of beer there. <laughs> I never had anything there. It's been well, closed the whole time I've been here. The back door is open. The back door is open. We ought to go in and just have a party. Right. <laughs> All right, time $100 is $100 uh, admission for everyone we have. 10.45, um, with nothing further to come before us, I will go ahead and adjourn the meeting unless you guys have anything. Um, all right, 10.45, meeting adjourned. Thank you, Amy. Thanks, guys.